All right, we are just getting ready to start this. And as we do that, I am also going to take just a moment to grab the Instagram live feed, which just means moving some things around on my desk. And there we go. And Sylvia is with us today. That's great. Hi, Sylvia. I cannot see you on the Zoom feed because this is not that kind of a webinar. Um, when we do, Sylvia is already registered for the course that is starting in two weeks. And so Sylvia, when we do that one, we will do it as a meeting, which means you will be able to have your camera turned on. When we do this as just a straight up webinar, I don't see the students, but you see me. So hopefully that helps. I know the tech stuff, there's a lot of tech stuff here, right? Just a ton of tech stuff. And so good to know all of that. And we are just setting up our live on Instagram. There we go. And while that's just connecting, yay, that was a fast connection today going to make sure that that camera focuses properly, which means again, need to just move some things around here. One of these days I will figure out the ideal setup, right? It'll happen. I promise it will. Okay, there we go. So here we are, again, we are talking about uh, dynamic iridology, confident nutritionist, and we're doing constitutions today. So we are just going to, um, okay, it looks like the recording is good. Awesome. Welcome, hello, I'm glad you're with me. Yay, we've got all the tech working, it's all good. This is wonderful. Don't you love it when that happens? It doesn't always happen that way with tech. Just that little disclaimer that we always do, this information is meant for your education only, it's not meant to diagnose or prescribe. You are responsible for any results, good or bad, that result from you using this information. Now, having said that, I also want to encourage you to engage with me. Uh, we're going to be awesome questions. We'll have some fun with this, hopefully. And I'd love it if you would type things in the comments in the chat box and things like that so that we can actually have a conversation rather than just having a me talking at you because that's just not fun for anybody. My name is Judith Cobb and I'll introduce myself more in just a moment. I'm going to encourage you also to grab a pen and paper because you are likely going to want to take notes. We're going to cover those three basic constitutions of constitutional iridology. And I think you'll be surprised at even how that little bit of information can be so helpful for whatever kind of holistic wellness work you do. Here we go. My name is Judith Cobb. I started studying holistic wellness in 1979. Yeah, that's a lot of years ago, like 40 years ago. And in those intervening years, I have achieved various credentials, master herbalist, uh, certified iridologist, natural nutrition clinical practitioner, certified comprehensive iridology instructor. And some of those credentials I have two or three or four times over because I found different schools that taught uh, content from a different angle, and I wanted the whole picture. So I've got a lot of training under my belt. I am the wife of one, the mom of seven, the grandma of eight, and that's just wonderful. And thank you everyone who's joining us on Instagram. It is so good to see you there. Um, thanks for joining us there. Way back when I started, um, when I started studying and practicing in the holistic health world, there was not a lot of training available. I did everything I could. And I've seen the whole thing from the 1980s where everybody, they were promoting the low fat, high carb fad. Where did that get us? Oh my goodness, that's, that was a train wreck, wasn't it? As we see looking back. Then in the 90s, it was all the candida craze. Everybody had candida. And these things just, um, they, some of them didn't make sense to me. When they were promoting high, uh, low fat, high carb, I was promoting high protein, good fats, 
high quality carbs, right? And so it's, it's just really weird to see how things have changed. One of the things that I learned back then also was iridology. And I learned that again from several different teachers. I started out as a Jensenian iridologist, studied that for about 10 years. And when I got frustrated with that because it just didn't work the way they said it did, I was just about ready to leave iridology behind altogether when I discovered constitutional iridology. You know, with Jensenian, they say that when you do these cleanses, your eyes will change, they'll change color, you'll see fibers move, all that kind of stuff. I never saw that. Not in my clients, not in myself. After 10 years of working, like you'd expect to see something, right? I never saw that. And so that was when I was blessed to come across constitutional iridology. And that's the, the approach I'm going to be sharing with you today. What I love about constitutional iridology is that it helps me integrate the other modalities that I have. So it helps me integrate the herbs and the nutrition and the flower essences and the aromatherapy, the lifestyle things that I know. It, and it doesn't tell me what's wrong with the client. And that's a really important thing. What it does is it tells me, it explains why the client may be having the symptoms they have. And that then helps me to understand with the other training I've got, how to integrate everything and how to create a program for my client. And so that's what I get so excited about when we are talking about iridology. Iridology in my clinic helps me to do my assessments more quickly. It helps me to be way more accurate in my assessments so I can really hit that problem head on and really directly. It helps me to build better and faster rapport with my client. You know, so often when we do a, um, an intake, you know, say you go to the doctor, if you're like your doctor, let's just talk for more than 15 seconds before he interrupts you and tells you what he wants to tell you. But what happens here with iridology is the old way we used to do it, we do this great big intake form and we would take photos and then we would tell the client what was wrong with them. And if we were lucky, we were right sometimes, but we were always spewing information out. What I find happens with constitutional iridology is because I no longer use an intake form, I find out what the client wants help with. I look at their eyes and then I integrate what their symptoms are with what I see in the eyes. And the eyes explain to me why the symptoms are the way they are. And the eyes then inform me as to the further questions I need to ask the client in order to be able to really help my client. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it eliminates the need for an intake form, which is so important to get rid of because they serve no useful purpose. All right. So let's talk about the lymphatic eye. Yeah. Now, if you've got um, basic questions about this, please feel free to put them in the chat or in the comments and we'll address those. The reason it's we want to talk about this very first, I know some iridology teachers talk about marks first, but the marks really don't give you information unless you understand the constitution because the constitution is the big picture. It's the foundation that everything else is built on. <clears throat> and if you don't have that foundation, nothing else actually fits properly. So with constitutional iridology, we actually do very little mapping because the mapping again is not nearly as important as understanding how this person is actually put together. And so this is, this is where we're going to head today. This eye that you're looking at is the quintessential example of a lymphatic iris. The lymphatic iris always has at least some blue. They're often predominantly blue, but they don't need to be. They just need to have some blue. There's always visible fiber, and they may have other colors overlaying them, as you see in this image where we've got tan colors, tan orangey colors. We've got white, right? We've got other colors overlaying the iris. So some of the common health concerns that we often see with the lymphatic eye types, and this is where we would want to be asking the questions, but some of the common health concerns we see with the lymphatic eye types is, are things like concerns around their mucous membranes, 
their overall acid levels. Uh, we see issues with their lymphatics, with the actual lymphatic, the lymph nodes and the lymphatic vessels sometimes. And so when we're working with the person who has a lymphatic iris, and they've given us their list of concerns and questions that they have about their own health, then we use what we see in the eye to tailor the questions we need to ask. And those questions will then give us the information we need to create a program. So when we look at this, we're going to ask, is there a personal or family history of asthma, allergies, arthritis, eczema, psoriasis, kidney issues? Now, if you've done anatomy and physiology, you already understand how all of those things actually tie back into how well the kidneys function and how the acid levels are being regulated. We can also ask the questions, is there a personal or family history of an immune insufficiency or challenge? Because that will tie us back into the lymphatic system, right? So those are the important questions to ask. So typically when we see a person with a lymphatic eye, those are the kinds of problems they're coming in for help with. They often have allergies or eczema or arthritis or psoriasis or um, some other acid imbalance, or they're finding that they're always getting sick, their immune system is not behaving the way they think it should and the way we think it should either for that matter. So with these people, again, those are the questions we want to focus on. And when we find that they have given us the answers based on their personal or family history, yes, my mom has, my dad has, my grandma has, yes, I have, no, I don't have that, but my brother does kind of thing. That then tells us a little bit more about what we need to know to help them. Then of course, we're going to ask about diet and lifestyle because then we can choose from their diet and their lifestyle, the things that they're doing really well. And we can encourage them to keep that going. And we can choose the things, the one or two key things, because it usually doesn't take more than that, that they really need to improve on. And by limiting our recommendations, we have a far better chance of getting really excellent compliance. Now, here's another lymphatic eye. Now, depending on what kind of a device you are watching this on and seeing this on, and I just need to get back here to where I actually um, am watching the live so I can watch for questions back there too, because we're on Facebook and Instagram and webinar here. Right, this is a lymphatic eye. Depending on what device you're looking at, it may look more blue it may look more kind of tannish, almost brownish, but there are elements of blue poking through. And so with the lymphatic eye, there has to be some kind of blue. It could be a steel blue or a gray blue. It might be a violet blue or a blue blue or a slightly greenish blue, but there will always be some element of blue. There will always be fiber visible. So as you look at this image, can you see the threads that are radiating outward from the center of the eye that are in this case, in this eye, they're fairly neatly organized. Those are the fibers we are looking at. And again, with a lymphatic eye, there may be other colors that are overlaying, that are sitting on top of the blue. And that's exactly what we see in this image. We see that in the background, we've got the blue but we've got yellow and white and orange and brown, depending on, again, the resolution of the monitor that you're viewing this on, those colors may be more or less visible. And so when we see all of this, then we, um, we know that we are still looking at a lymphatic eye. So I would love to see in the comments box, do you think you've got a lymphatic eye of some type? If you do, just let me know that you have a lymphatic eye. That's kind of fun. Again, these people, the, this lymphatic type, are a little more predisposed to thyroid issues. And even when there is no indication of thyroid in the thyroid reaction field in the iris, they are still a little more prone to thyroid issues. Remember that the thyroid, the thyroid and parathyroid work together and they have an awful lot to do with calcium balance in the body and calcium assimilation. So with our lymphatic people, we may also want to, um, we may also want to be asking questions around personal and family history of thyroid and parathyroid issues, right? So our goal here 
isn't to use iridology like some kind of a crystal ball guessing game kind of thing. And I'm just playing with my um, screen here so that when notifications pop up, they don't actually show on your screen that you're seeing. There we go. Um, and so, sorry about that, that minor distraction. So when we see this again, we need to ask about personal or family history of thyroid. Thyroid regulates, thyroid, parathyroid work together to regulate calcium balance. And so we need to ask those questions because that then is going to lead on to questions potentially, or at least information about bone health, right? It, you may be working with someone where they're complaining or they're, maybe their concern is osteoporosis. They've been diagnosed with osteoporosis or osteopenia. And so you're looking at their eye, you're seeing their lymphatic, you're going to ask, is there a personal or family history of, and there probably is. And then when we see that, um, we can work with that and make the dietary recommendations that are so important for them. Constitutional iridology is all about understanding the whole constitution of the person. So we can understand uh, where their less resilient and more resilient areas are so that we can understand why their health is the way it is and so that we can then guide them on to better health. Along the way of taking them on that journey towards better health, their symptoms will subside. The goal isn't, um, the goal is to not just make symptoms subside, the goal is to actually help them generate better health, right? That is so important. The goal is never to change their eye color because that's an old Jensenian concept that is totally inaccurate and it has no relevancy whatsoever. The goal is to begin reducing symptoms, but on a deeper level to begin balancing their overall chemistry and their wellness so that we get to the root of the problem and we actually remediate their health at that foundation level. Does that make sense? That's what this is all about. That's the tip of the iceberg introduction to the very first constitution of the three that we're going to cover. So how can constitutional iridology help you in your wellness business? Well, here's what one of my grads has said. This is the lovely Sharon Bimrose. She's a naturopath in Australia. She said she'd already taken iridology as a part of her studies as a naturopath. However, the course Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology surpassed her previous training in structure, content, delivery, documentation, and support. Iridology has certainly reduced the time required for prioritizing a treatment plan. Iridology, without a doubt, has been a huge game changer to my practice. So she already had some training, but we really built on that and really helped her to create the, the kind of iridology practice she wanted to have. We're, we are going to spend a little time doing some promotion here. The next go-round of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology starts on Wednesday, January 15th, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You can see some different time zones from around the world there. So if you are um, in any of those places, go you. You can see what time things are at. Now, I do encourage you to actually check on a time zone converter because here in Canada, we change our times on March the 8th. And so if you are not in the mountain time zone that changes on March the 8th, you may be affected by the time zone change. So be, be aware of what, where you are. Registration is now open. Is now open at iridology.education slash priority. Registration is closing on January the, the 11th at 9 p.m to give us time to get all the students properly registered and integrated into the system. Let's do our second constitutional type. I'd love to know in the comments if you think you've got an eye like this. This is hematogenic, which is the classic brown eye. Now, when we say classic brown, as you can see on the image on your screen, this is a brown eye, but it has gold in it as well. Right? And so a hematogenic eye will often have gold in it in places. I might even have a dark brown. It might have different colors. But your, your distinguishing features here is there's absolutely no blue, no green, and no visible fiber. The pigment in this eye is layered on top of 
the, the fiber. And so it is masking whatever is beneath it. So it's hiding any kind of blue that might be there. And John Jensen, welcome to, uh, to our presentation on Instagram Live. It's so great to have you with us. So when we see this hematogenic eye, the key areas that we want to be paying attention to are their blood and their liver because that is where their inherent predispositions lie in challenges with the blood and the liver. Now, you know, that just because that's where their inherent challenges are, their inherent predispositions are, doesn't mean they have to have a problem there, right? Maybe, maybe what we're seeing in the eye is just what they've inherited and they don't have those problems. Maybe they figured out how to control the situation years ago. And they know that if they use these kinds of foods and have this kind of a lifestyle, everything stays great. If they go off on a tangent and they start doing all these other things, things are not so great. So they may have figured that all out already. They may already be working on their health, whether it's intuitively or they've been doing research, they've had other help with guidance. People with hematogenic eyes, again, are more inherently prone to issues with the spleen, the stomach and digestion, circulation and heart, varicose veins, pH balance, and these people tend to be more alkaline. They, they need to actually, they need help promoting their, um, they need help keeping their, their acid up to keep their mineral assimilation good, especially their calcium. And because their minerals tend to not hold well, because they don't have the acid to help them assimilate those minerals, they also tend to have a bit of an endocrine or metabolic imbalance because minerals are so critical to that. So depending on what symptoms or imbalances the client is presenting with, the question you might ask the hematogenic person would include things like, is there a personal or family history of blood imbalances? Maybe even allergies due to liver imbalances. Are there immune issues due to liver imbalances? Because your liver does a lot of the immune functions. Are there hormonal issues? Because the liver, again, processes the carbs, which makes your cholesterol, which is the precursor to all of your hormones. Or is there a personal or family history of blood lipid imbalance, including cholesterol, which again goes back to the liver? What about weight issues? Again, due to liver imbalance. Now, you wouldn't ask all of those questions. If you asked all of those questions, you're probably gonna scare the daylights out of your client. And so we don't want to do that. We only want to ask questions that relate to the client's issues, particularly in the first appointment. As you ask those questions and get answers, that's gonna trigger more questions. And Sylvia says she thinks she has the hematogenic eye. And Sylvia, with what I know about you, even though we've never met face to face, I would agree. I suspect your eyes are hematogenic. So again, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what we need to know about the hematogenic eye type. Let's do a little bit more detail about what's coming up in the course, Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Eye Radiology. This is what you're going to learn in the course. You're going to learn beginning to intermediate iridology at a level that will prepare you to certify with the International Iridology Practitioners Association if you so choose. We will also be covering sclerology, which is looking at the whites of the eye, where the iris is very inherently predisposed, so it is genetically influenced. The sclera is very dynamic. It's what you've done to your body, what you're doing with your body right now. We will also work with basic nutrition. So hopefully you've got some nutrition reading or studying under your belt. We're gonna build on that a little bit. We're not teaching a full-blown nutrition class, but we do incorporate nutrition. And we also incorporate her herbology, again, nutrition and herbology as they relate to iridology. We need to understand the different iris colors, which is a bit of what we're introducing today. We need to understand pigment colors, which is a little bit different than the iris color. We need to understand the markings. We need to understand how all of these things integrate with each other. And this is what we cover in class. 
And we do it so that you can do your assessments more quickly, so that you can understand your client on a deeper level, so you can create faster and better rapport with your client. And so that you can get your client programs developed right in your client sessions. Because I know that so many nutritionists and herbalists see the client go off and then spend two or three or four hours creating a program and a package for the client. And then they come back to work with the client again, but they're not getting paid for those two or three or four hours that they're off doing the program development. And that's not a highly successful way to run a business. I don't know about you, but I've got bills to pay, right? And that's not meant to sound mercenary, but the fact of the matter is it's a business and it needs to be making money. So again, I'm not going to actually be teaching nutrition or herbology, but I am going to incorporate them. It is very helpful if you actually have some anatomy and physiology under your belt before you do the course as well, if that's at all possible, or at least be doing an anatomy and physiology course while you are taking the iridology course with me. Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology is delivered via 20 live webinars. And so... You know, as we look at this um, and we look at everything that you're going to be, pre be prepared to learn here, I want you to be thinking about 20 live two hour long webinars. That's a 40 hour class. How much would that cost if you had to go somewhere to do a week long 40 hour class? What would all of the expenses be that would be attached to that? Airfare, hotel, meals, um, no wages for a week, things like that. How much would that add up to? Just kind of do that math in your head. In included in the course, I have written a 200 page iridology textbook that um, when you are an IPA certified instructor, all of your materials have to be vetted and approved by IPA. And they've approved my textbook and the auditing committee actually said it was one of the best textbooks they'd ever seen and it was one of the best ones they'd ever seen for not only how well it was written but the images that are in it and um and just how concise it is and how well it, it adheres to the ipa curriculum with go, without going off on weird tangents so that's really cool that was just a little for me and that i appreciated that so that is a digital download for you included in your tuition as a, a free bonus. You also receive a 40 page cheat sheets, which is the, the entire curriculum uh, condensed down into about 45 pages of charts, which make it so much easier with, when you're with a client to, and you're thinking, I know I know that, but what questions do I ask about it? Flip into your cheat sheets and it'll have the marking, the description, what the common symptoms might be, the kinds of questions you would ask, the kinds of suggestions you would consider making. And so that's included as a bonus, again, just to speed up how you do your assessments and stay on target with them. And I also have designed an iridology map, which I provide to you as a bonus, as a digital download. So that's all included. Most teachers make you purchase a textbook that's worth about $250, and it's a beautiful textbook, um, but it's $250 more out of your pocket. Nobody that I know of has cheat sheets and they all make you purchase your own iridology map as well, which is again, another expense out of pocket over and above their tuition and other, um, other things that you have to pay for when you do a class. Here is what one of my students recently said about the class. Karen uh, is a, an R and our registered holistic nutritional consultant. I, can't remember the alphabet, uh, an acronym for that. Um, she had graduated and she said this. She said, I returned from a regenerative detoxification course where iridology is implemented. I spread the word about what a wonderful teacher you are. Most people I talked with did not have anywhere near the same experience with their iridology education. No support, unanswered questions, and a lot of confusion. Mostly they finished their classes not knowing how to implement what they had learned. I feel so absolutely blessed to have been taught by you. Okay, and she goes on to thank me, which I'm very grateful for. And then she added, when I asked on our private student Facebook group, I asked, 
how has learning constitutional iridology helped you in your business? She said, iridology has helped me to understand the relationships between different organs and organ systems more in depth. Now remember, she already had anatomy and physiology under her belt. So this expanded her understanding. Iridology also gives me an advantage of seeing the potential for different genetic traits and qualities that may be underlying. By observing the constitution, for example, you can extrapolate how the person's body will likely respond to applications of healing methods. Therefore, it has helped me to expand my knowledge and increased efficiency at providing more precise recommendations for health-oriented options. Love it, love it, love it. And I don't know why I've got a blank slide in there. That's weird because this is the one I should have there. There we go. So what else you get in this class? And we've still got one more iris type to talk about, which we'll be doing in just a moment. The course tuition itself is $23.95, right? But add to that, that you get the digital download bundle of the textbook, the iridology map, and the cheat sheets worth a value of $450. Then we also have the private Facebook group and the private office hours webinar. Now these are only for my students and my grads. This is an ongoing support. Once you finish the class, you are not kicked out. You get to continue on hanging out with us in the Facebook group and in our office hours webinars to get ongoing support. And that's one of the things that Karen Choate, whom we met just a few slides back, loved about this. She graduated about two years before she wrote that. She is a regular on the Facebook group and in the office hours because it's the ongoing support. And that's why that's worth $20,000. That's not going away anytime soon. Bonus bundle number two is you get recordings of every class, recordings of the individual topics and recordings of the last 18 months of office hours calls all stored on your student site. That's like getting the class two more, three more actual full times. So that's worth $71.85. So you can go back and review as often as you need to. In the office hours, if you submitted a case for us to discuss, and we go through them pretty quick, but we go pretty in detail, you can go back to the recording and listen to it so that you can be more helpful to your client. Bundle number three is IPA student mentoring, which is, um, preparing you for your exams. Now, most teachers charge extra for this. It's not included in their tuition. If you decide you want to do the exam, you actually have to pay them extra for them to do the two exam prerequisites in order to prepare you for the IPA exam. I include that as a bonus in my tuition. This is what it will look like when you get into the student site. You can see on here, and I just need to slip this around a little bit. When you log in, all of the lessons are listed down the left side of the page and you just click on the one you want. This is a image of the title page of the downloadable textbook and you just click on it and work with it. And um, that's what the site looks like. You can work through each of the lessons, but when you are in the live class, the lessons are released one per week so that you don't get to work ahead. I want you to learn what we are teaching and learn it well before we add information to it. Every lesson also has a quiz. And before the next lesson is released online, you have to pass the quiz of the previous lesson. You still keep attending your live classes as they happen because we're not going to hold back while you finish up a quiz. But you've got the quizzes there that prove to you on another level how well you know the information. right? And it's a great way to prepare for the IFA written exam um, because it is an online multiple choice exam. So we've got in this class about 180 questions, whereas the IPA written exam is about 250 questions. So this is a good preparation if you want to certify. Each lesson again has every topic recorded. So you get the recording of your actual class, and then you also get recordings of each individual topic. And so if there's only one little topic you need to review, you can hop into your student site and listen to just that one if you don't want to listen to all two hours, but you can go back to these as much as you want for as long as you want. So again, the tuition is $23.95 Canadian, which is five payments of $5.29. This course starts in just two weeks. It starts on January 15th. 
the registration link is iridology.education slash priority. I'm going to, because we aren't doing the full promotional webinar here, I'm going to encourage you that when you go to iridology.education slash priority, read through the entire page so you can see everything that you get, all the support I'm going to give you that no other teacher gives. Now, having said all that, today is New Year's Eve, right? Happy New Year's, by the way, right? And so I'm doing a flash Happy New Year's Eve sale. So only the people who catch this in time are going to get in on this. And that is $200 off, $21.95 Canadian or five payments of $4.89 Canadian. That is only going to be valid until 6 p.m. Mountain time today. So save you $200. Now, for those of you who are in the US, remember your dollar trades a little differently than ours. So your dollar is worth about 30% more, which means you can knock roughly 30% off these figures that you see on the screen here. When you go through the registration process, you are going to see the numbers listed in Canadian. When you go into your credit card statement, you are going to see that your credit card has converted it and has adjusted the price accordingly to put it into your currency. Same goes for if you're in Australia, where your dollar is a little bit weaker than ours, so you would add about 5% to these, these figures you see on the screen. And I don't remember the conversion for British pound sterling, but there you have it. This is only available until 6 p.m. today. This is the lovely Michelle Davies. She is another student and we are just about ready to do our third iris type. She is another student who has graduated, but she came to me with a lot of iridology training under her belt already. And I get all kinds of students. I get students who have no training whatsoever. Love you. I get students who are really well trained like Michelle. Love you, right? It doesn't matter because we can make the course fit everybody very easily. She came in with training from David Pesek and from Darko Purse. She knew her stuff, but she says, this is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Judith's course is top on my list. And so that was really great. She also said that it helps her to, most importantly, how to put it all together and make a proper assessment, which is exactly what I want my students to feel. That kind of confidence, hence the title, Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology. Our third eye type. This is our third constitution, and this is the one that a lot of people find a little harder to identify. This is the biliary eye type. Now, in Jensenian work, they would say this person needs to do a lot of cleansing, those should be blue eyes, and boy, this person is super toxic. A constitutional doesn't agree with that at all, not even one little bit. Constitutional says this is what you've inherited. This teaches us what your body is made of. And so for constitutional, what, what we are looking for for defining markers is no visible blue. We'll probably see browns and golds in here. Um, we may see darker around the pupil, which is exactly what we see here. And we will always see fiber radiating outward. So we may not see fiber all the way around, but we will see areas of fiber. So we've got uh, no blue, some fiber, browns and golds, usually a little more concentrated brown towards the pupil. So do you think you've got a biliary eye? I'd love to see that in the comments box if you do. When we are looking at a biliary eye, the questions that we want to consider asking, again, based on the symptoms and the problems the client has, wants help with. The questions we want to ask are gonna focus on the digestive system, including the stomach, on the liver, which again includes the immune and the blood sugars and the, the uh, lipid profile and things like that, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. So in the biliary eye, we do see a bit of a combination of the features and the predispositions of both the hematogenic and the lymphatic eye, right? So when we see that, we then know how to dig a little deeper and what questions to ask to get the information we need to craft the program that is going to address our client's symptoms and their core causes 
of their situation. Has this been good? Has that been, I know we've got some experienced iridologists with us and we've got some new people to iridology. Has this been a good little review for you or a good little introduction? I hope it has and I hope that what you've learned has been useful. If you are ready to take that next leap, just a reminder that until 6 p.m. tonight, you have a special opportunity to get in on a flash sale, a Happy New Year's Eve sale, uh, to register for $200 off. So the $200 off is $21.95 is and is five payments of $4.89. The tuition after 6 p.m. tonight will be $23.95 or five payments of $5.29. So with that, I just encourage you to hop on over to iridology.education slash priority and get yourself registered if you're not all registered yet. And Sylvia says, it's been a good intro for you. Excellent, Sylvia, so glad it was. And of course, we're going to cover a lot more of this. This, uh, this is lesson two. Uh, the, tip of the iceberg version of lesson two when you are in your course that starts on January 15th. So I look forward to seeing you then and I wish you all a very happy new year and uh, don't just be careful tonight. You know, if you do drink, don't drive. And if you don't drink, good on ya. And uh, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Bye for now.